Now, Neil, I'm uh, Dr. Swanepoel. Welcome. I hear you are having a little bit of chest discomfort today. So today I'd like to do a cardiovascular examination on you. It's going to entail me listening to your heart. I'll also need to touch your chest, and it's also going to mean you're having to take off your shirt. Will that be okay with you? Yes. Good. And then you can just move your shirt, and I'm also going to ask you to remove your shoes and socks. And I just want to quickly wash my hands. Right. Just make sure my bed is at a 45 degree angle. That would be the optimum position to do the cardiovascular examination. While Yanil is lying down on the bed, you can just lie down. I'm already observing, and Yanil looks pretty healthy. I don't see any obvious signs of him being acutely ill or chronically ill or acute on chronic <coughs> ill. Looking at his surroundings, there's nothing of note. He doesn't have any medications that he's brought with him. I don't see any. He doesn't have any oxygen, and he's not in a hospital setup where I'd expect him to be on an ID. Also, he doesn't have any obvious characteristics of any of the syndromes that can uh, give you uh, a cardiac defects. So those three syndromes that I'm quickly observed for were Marfins, uh, Turners and Downs, and he has no obvious features of any of the three. All right. So firstly, I'd like to start off with the hands, and then if you could just give me your hands, and if you could just do this for me. So I'm just quickly doing a shamrock, the shamrock is negative, so he doesn't have any evidence of clubbing. I also don't notice any splinter hemorrhages in his lens, and he's not cyanotic. So while I'm at the fingertips, I would also like to check his capillary filling, so just a quick pressure. And he has normal capillary filling, he's filling uh, his capillaries filled up within two seconds of me having left or stopped the pressure. Right. Also, while I'm on these extensor surfaces, I'm just checking for uh, xanthomata, so cholesterol buildup on the extensor tendons, which he also doesn't have. And then if we just turn his hands around, and yeah, I'm just taking note, and he doesn't have uh, Osler nodes, and I don't see any Janeway lesions. There's also no Palmer erythema. And while looking at his fingers, I also didn't notice any tar staining. Right. So now, you know, I'm just going to have a feel of your pulse. And I've... Um, Feeling his pulse, his, his rhythm is regular, uh, it's normal in character, and we actually measured his rate beforehand, because it was nice and regular, he's got a rate of 60 beats per minute, which is completely normal. I also would like to just compare right and left, and here I'm checking for a radial, radial delay, which he doesn't have. I'm also going to just feel his femoral pulses for the purpose of the video. I'm not going to feel under his pants, but we'll just get a femoral pulse. There's also no radial femoral delay. This is important just to exclude coarctations of the aorta. The last thing I would also like to feel for is if he's got a hyperdynamic pulse. So I'm just quickly getting his radial pulse, and then I'm shifting my fingers up till I don't feel any more pulsation. And we'll just remember at the level of the heart, then just lift it 90, he's on 90 degrees. And I still don't feel any pulse, so this is a normal pulse. If I felt a pulse after I'd lifted it, you remember, we would consider it being a hyperdynamic pulse. We've also checked uh, Yanil's blood pressure beforehand. His blood pressure was 120 or 80, uh, so completely normal. I now move up to Yanil's face. Yanil, I'm going to ask you just to look up for me while I gently just draw down on your lower eyelids. He's not anemic and he doesn't have any signs of jaundice. And looking in his eyes, just open up nicely, I don't see any arcus. So no arcus uh, sinalis or arcus cornelis. Right, and then eyelids, he also doesn't have any xanthanus martin. So if you had cholesterol buildups there, I'd also be worried that this is a cardiovascular risk. But luckily he does not. And I don't see any mitral facies. Right, Yanil's lips of normal color. Nice and pink, so no signs of peripheral cyanosis. If you could just open your mouth for me, please. He has normal dentures. Uh, I don't see any decay or plaque or bacterial buildup here. Just stick out your tongue for me. And his tongue is a nice pink color, so no sign of central cyanosis. Open up wide. I just want to have a look at his palate. And yeah, specifically, I'm looking for a high arch palate, which he doesn't have. You remember, high arch palate would be uh, one of the signs we look for in Marfan syndrome. And then he also doesn't have any particular in his upper palate. Right, and then I'm going to ask you just to lift your chin slightly. I'm moving down to his neck. 
And here's three things I want to quickly check. The first being is uh, carotid pulse. So I'm going to place my fingers on this trachea, just slide them laterally to the groove between trachea and sternomastoid, and here's a nice pulse. All right, once again, normal in rate, rhythm, and this is the best place to describe the character. In this case, here's a normal character. All right. Uh, secondly, I'd like to check his jugular venous pressure. So I can ask you just to turn to the left, not uh, overextending uh, the sternomastoid muscles. And then I'm just going to come down to the level of these pulsations. Just remember the pulsations I'm looking for are the pulsations arising from the internal jugular uh, uh, under the sternomastoid. And it's a flickering pulse, and I cannot feel it, so I know I'm at the right place. And now I would just like to measure it. So I'm going to measure the vertical height from the sternal angle. So just feel the notch vertical height and I'm just going to make a mark where I am seeing the upper pulsation of that internal jugular and I'm just going to measure it. Remember your patient needs to be at 45 degrees and in the Neil's case it's 3 centimeters. We can also talk about 8 centimeters water jugular venous pressure so that gives us a good indication of pressures in the right atrium which in this case appear normal. And then the last thing I'd like to do is just to check if his trachea is central. There's three different methods in doing it. I explained it to you, and his trachea is nice and central, so anterior medial should be in the normal position. I'm now moving down to his precordium, and here are four things I'd like to do. It's the inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So on inspection, the important characteristics to look for are scarring. All right, I'd like to give him an indication of whether or not he's had previous surgeries, in the Neil's case, not. I don't see any scars. I'll have a look at his back a little later in the examination. He also doesn't have any evidence of a pacemaker, and uh, I don't see any obvious uh, chest wall deformities, uh, like a pectum excavator. And lastly, I just would like to check for pulsations, which he doesn't have, and specifically pulsations in the vicinity of the apex. All right. So that concludes my inspection. I'm now going to move over to palpation. So the first step of my palpation, I would like to feel his AP valves, his aorta and pulmonary valves. And uh, in his case, I don't feel any thrills. A thrill being a palpable murmur. Okay, so no palpable murmurs over his AP valves. I'm now feeling for a heave on his sternum. And he has also no heave. I've been worried about right ventricular hypertrophy if there was. We're now going to move down. And now I'm feeling over his tricuspid and mitral valves. And once again, I don't feel any thrills or any numbers. Okay? And lastly, I'm going to feel for his apex beat. Just remember the apex beat being the most infralateral beat in his chest. And there I found his apex beat. I just need to check that it is in the correct position. So once again, I'm feeling the sternal angle, which is the second intercoastal, then counting down, and he is, is in the fifth intercoastal, and is in the mid-clavicular line, so in a normal position. I don't feel any tapping, and I don't feel any heavy. All right, so there's no evidence of a volume-loaded apex beat or a pressure-loaded apex beat. All right, I'm now going to percuss Daniel's chest, and I'm first going to just percuss over his sternum, just for sternal dullness, for a possible retrosternal goiter. But his percuss is nice and resident. And then I'm just going to compare left and right. And then specifically try and percuss for the cardiac border, which is difficult to do, not a very accurate sign. I don't hear anything specific. I'm now going to move over to auscultation. And with the auscultation, I'd like to start by using the bell of my stethoscope for those low pitch sounds. And I'm going to start in the vicinity of the mitral valve. So firstly, I'm going to just determine uh, my first and second heart sounds, which would be systole and diastole. My first heart sound being the mitral and tricuspid closing. I'm going to listen to all four uh, uh, heart valves. And I'm also going to be listening to uh, if I hear any uh, murmurs, any abnormal sounds, and also the presence of a third or fourth heart sound. So I'll, in, in my case, I'm going to start in uh, the mitral 
valve and I'm first just going to listen to it feeding my carotid pulse just to pick up S1 and S2 and I'll have them I don't hear any murmurs I'm going to just switch to my the diaphragm of my stethoscope again and Daniel has a normal S1 S2 I do not hear any murmurs or abnormal sounds if there were murmurs I would first grade the murmur uh, if it was a systolic murmur, 1 to 6, or a diastole, 1 to 4, I would describe uh, when my murmur occurs, in what part of the cardiac cycle, systole or diastole, where it was radiating to and the quality of the cell. But he does not have any murmurs. I would just like to make sure that he, uh, I'm not missing anything, so I'm going to do a, the first of my cardiac maneuvers. So then I'm going to ask you to just turn on to your left side. Just face the rest of the class, hand back here, and firstly I'm just going to feel my apex beat again, and it's definitely more prominent now, but in a normal position, and now listen for the mitral valve to hear if there's any accentuation of any abnormal sounds or murmurs, but he remains normal, so he has a normal, um, normal sounds of his mitral valve. If you can just turn back, lie down on your back. I'm now going to listen to his tricuspid valve, and once again, everything sounds perfectly normal. I'm moving up to my pulmonary valve. There's a minor splitting of the second heart sound, but this is a normal occurrence. And his aortic valve also sounds normal. If you just lift your chin, I'm now just listening over his carotid area. And I'm listening here specifically for a breathe, which I do not hear. All right. Right, if you could just sit up straight for me. I'm now going to do the second cardiac maneuver. So, Yamil needs to just sit up straight. He, I'm going to just ask you to breathe out, and as you breathe out, just hold your breath. All right, breathe out, hold your breath. And once again, I'm just feeling over the uh, aortic valve, and I do not feel a palpable murmur. All right, just breathe easily. I'm going to ask you again to breathe out and just hold your breath as I listen in the, the second intercoastal space and once again for an aorta murmur, which I do not get. So just remember, forward position breathing out would accentuate uh, left side and uh, murmurs. There are other cardiac maneuvers um, I can do if I do hear a systolic murmur, that would be the Valsalva maneuver or have my patient squat or the hand grip method which I'm not going to do now because I do not get any moments. I'm now going to proceed to examining uh, Yanil's uh, uh, back and once again I'm going to follow those four pillars of inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. So with inspection I'm just again looking for chest wall deformities. So he's got no obvious chest wall deformities or kyphoscoliosis. I don't see any posterior scars so there was no, no uh, surgery. Um, previously and uh, no chest tube scars. Um, I'm now going to move over to palpation and here I'm feeling for sacral edema which he doesn't have. So I'd be worried if there was sacral edema for possible heart failure. I'm now going to percuss and I just need to percuss through both lungs and here I'm specifically looking for dullness in the basal areas which I would expect to find if he had pleural effusion which he doesn't. I'm now going to quickly listen to his chest and just breathe in and out for me. Now Neil has got good breath sounds and once again I'm specifically listening for fine uh, coarse uh, uh, um, crackles which I uh, would expect to hear if he had pulmonary edema which he doesn't. He's got good breath sounds by nature. Right, you can lie back down for me. That is now concludes uh, the back or the, the precordial examination. I'm now going to move down to his abdomen and here I first want to just determine that he doesn't have splenomegaly and hepatomegaly, splenomegaly in effective endocarditis. There I'm now going to feel epigastric and here I'm feeling for any pulsations or heaves which I'd expect to find if he had right ventricular hypertrophy. I don't feel any heaves or pulsations. Um, and I don't feel he's a water, but I'm just going to be sure. So I just want to check for expansile pulsations of the aorta. 
uh, just to exclude a possible aortic aneurysm, which he doesn't have. He also didn't have any signs of ascites, and now I'm just going to listen specifically to hear if I hear any renal breeze, which I don't. Right. Then we'll proceed to the, the last bit of his examination by examining his pulses again. So we would have a look at both femoral pulses, that they present and equal. Uh, you need to address your patient for this part of the examination. We will check uh, uh, both popliteal uh, pulses and then move down into the lower leg. If we could just pull your pants up slightly and make sure he's posterior tibialis and dorsal penis pulses are positive. They're both present and also just check if they're nice and equal, which is hard. Then I'm going to just apply some pressure to the lower third of his tibia, just medial to the tibial ridge. And what I'd like to determine here is whether or not he has edema. In his case, there isn't evidence of edema, but I'd be specifically looking here for pitting edema and uh, versus non-pitting edema, so pitting edema being stayed indented, and then also comparing left and right. If he had bilateral edema, I'd be worried about systemic ailments, uh, like heart failure. Uh, unilateral edema, I'd be more concerned about local occurring pathology, for instance, a cellulitis, but more importantly, a DVT. So just remember with DVT, the other characteristics would be an enlargement of the circumference around the calf muscle, tenderness when you squeeze the calf muscle, also redness, heat, and uh, you may also do dorsiflexia of the ankle. Just don't do it if there is an obvious DVT, you could dislodge the DVT. Right, so we check the lower legs, then I'm going to move over to his feet, and here I'm looking for basically the same signs I looked for at his hands. So once again, just taking note that there's no clubbing, I don't see any splinter hemorrhages there, and um, He's not cyanotic, so no signs of peripheral cyanosis. And uh, I'm also just observing his feet for any trophic changes. So if he had arterial insufficiency or venous insufficiency, we get hair loss on these uh, ankles and feet. And we can sometimes see ulcer, especially in the vicinity of the malleoli, as well as discolorization of the lower legs, especially hyperpigmentation. Um, I'd also just like to check his Achilles tendons and here I'm once again checking for xanthomata or cholesterol deposits occurring on the Achilles tendon which he does not have. Right, so just to conclude my examination, um, I'm going to be doing a fundoscopy so that we can just look for any changes, uh, arterial changes in his retina. Secondly, I'm going to ask him to go and give us a urine sample. We will do dipsticks, make sure there's no hematuria. And lastly, I'm also going to check his temperature to make sure he doesn't have any fever. Now, Neil, your examination was perfectly normal. I did not pick up any abnormalities. Um, so we'll run a few more tests, but you actually look pretty healthy. So thank you very much. You can get dressed for us again. And uh, I just want to quickly just wash my hands once more. I've got some more patients to see. That concludes our examination.